Hi all, this is a tutorial to show you how to use uh, the data tables that I suggest you use for your poster uh, and put the data in those tables and then copy and paste the table onto your poster. The poster is actually an oversized PowerPoint slide and ultimately I want you to save that one PowerPoint slide as a PDF when you submit it, but that's after you've uh, put everything on there that goes there. So the easiest way to do this, first of all, I want to make sure that you uh, get something out of this here. I, I arranged this the best way I could for the data to put in here, but make sure you read the paragraph up here because it tells you how scientists think when they're going to be uh, producing a report, whether it's on a poster or more formally in a research journal. Uh, and the main idea there is you never report your full raw data set that you collect. You always report summary data, and that means the descriptive statistics, sample size, standard deviation, uh, the mean and the standard deviation. And then sometimes you report a range, and there's different ranges. There's 95% confidence intervals. There's standard error. Uh, and so on. Uh, in this case, uh, we have a specific range we're doing as a significance test. So I included that here on the bottom table to write down your test range. Now, if you do that in a table, you're already giving the range in table format. There's no need to provide a bar graph to show the ranges uh, in a pictorial form or in a, in a visual sense. So for your germination rates, I'm going to suggest you just make a table and then put the ranges there. And then uh, the reader of your poster can just inspect the data and um, put that data uh, and then evaluate it for themselves. For the other data table, I have both radical length and shoot length. Uh, and it has on the top the mean, uh, the sample size, the mean, and the standard deviation because you need to report the summary data. You're not going to give the raw data sets. The individual can assess what the average value is by looking at this table and what roughly the variation was like. But notice this table here doesn't provide the test range like it does for the germination rate. So here I'm going to have you practice uh, making a graph with the test ranges and the mean values. So the, the key point here is if your table already shows the information needed to assess uh, whether or not there's differences like this one does because it reports the test range here, then don't make a graph because now you're being redundant. You're saying the same thing twice in two different formats. For the second data table, it's not showing the test ranges, so you can provide your descriptive statistics here and then show a picture, especially if you want to emphasize it to show uh, those test ranges as error bars, which was the last tutorial where I showed you how to make the error bars. So the easiest way, the best way to do this, guys, is because you can't work on the document that I shared with you through my Google Files. It's, it's locked where you can just see it, but you can download it. So what I would do is you would download it uh, to as a Microsoft Word. Now, if you don't have Microsoft Word, uh, on your device, you can actually access that and then open it there through your email, through the web. So uh, if uh, I went to my web mail, uh, through the web mail here, here's where my email is, out here on the corner there, you can open up a Word and uh, you can um, open up your file that way. Now I had to work around a little bit to figure out how I can get that done, but basically I had to uh, save the file to my my drive through the school and then I was able to open it. Uh, but here I went ahead and downloaded it and since I have Word on my device I'm going to go ahead and open it in Word. Okay, uh, You may have to enable editing and here's the table. So now you can go and you fill it in because you can't fill it in uh, through that other one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize this. So I have two choices. I can minimize this uh, here or I can write all my data down on paper uh, write all my data down and then uh, go and transfer it here directly. But since I'm, I'm not going to write it down, I'm going to open up, I'm going to have my spreadsheet here side by side with it. And you can see here I have two tabs. The first one is for germination rates. The second one is for radical length. Now, when I did my radish experiment, I got almost full germination for both uh, the treatment and the, and the experimental. Uh, I got... Uh, I started with 15 seeds and by 24 hours I got all 15 germinating and with some exceptions in the experimental I got uh, very few so uh, I didn't feel it necessary for me to go to a 72 hour period because both were germinating at pretty high rates and 
I was already able to say it's roughly 100% for what I treated uh, here. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to transfer this data here. And you can see here this is a uh, number of seeds uh, germinated at 24 hours for both the control and the experimental. And then the 48 hour and 72. Now I don't have 72 hour, but you may because that was uh, suggested what you do. So in here, uh, I have my, my summary data. Remember, you, you don't report your raw data. Never do that. So I'm going to type in here for my sample size for the control. I see seven there. Uh, and then uh, um, my experimental group over here, they're all seven. So uh, that's seven for the 24 hour for the experimental group. Now, the mean number germinated for uh, the experimental group, which would be under here at 24 hours, this is a 24 hour column right there. It, the mean is the second one from over here. That's the mean. Okay, so the mean was next. And the mean for the experimental group of 24 hours, uh, it shows that it is 14.7. So I'm going to type in 14.7. And then you go on and you're going to type in the data. And make sure you type it in correctly for the experimental control at each uh, time uh, that you see there. Uh, and so let me continue at least filling this one in. And then you would do the same for your 48 hour and 72. Make sure you're putting the numbers in the correct place uh, because the arrangement of this summary table is not the same as your raw data calculations. Uh, my mean value for 24 hours for the control was 14.6. So almost all of them germinated after 24 hours because it was 15. Uh, the standard deviation here, SD, is 0.8. Now here you're reporting the standard deviation and not the half standard deviation. And then for the uh, experimental group, it's the second, uh, the next one after there, it's 0 .0 0 0.5. Sometimes it might be easier just to write these down, but you got to make sure not to make mistakes and then go type them in. Uh, and then over here, when you're going to do your test range, go ahead and do the low value first and then the high value. So here's my test range based on adding and subtracting one half standard deviation. So the low value is 14.2 and then put a dash. And then the high value, which is the one right above it, is 15.0. Oops, that's not where I wanted that. Uh, oh no. Uh, over here, 15. Uh, Point zero, and then we want to do the test range for the experimental. Remember, this is the ranges we test to see if there's common values between the two ranges. That means that's another way of saying that they overlap. And then right here, uh, low value is 14.5, and then 15.0. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, and fill. fill. So I'm going to pause my video here. Uh, fill in the rest of the data, at least for the 48 hours. You would do the same for your 72-hour data, and then I'll show you how to paste it on your poster. Okay, okay so I finished typing in my data for the 48-hour, uh, and you can see, if you went back to my data set, by the time I got to 48 hours for the control over there on the left of the screen, you can see I got 15s in every replicate, so there was no variation at all. All of them were 15. The average is 15, and there's no deviation from the mean. They're all 15s. So there's zero standard deviation, and that means there's no test range uh, because you need a range of values to get a, a, a test range there because it involves standard deviation, and standard deviation is zero. So now that I filled in that table, and then you would want to make sure you fill in the data for your shoot lengths correctly here, and it's just the summary information, right? So once you've done this, you want to make sure that you go and you copy this table and you can uh, uh, right click on it to copy okay, or control C and then you go to the poster you've chosen. I sent out a link to ask you guys to choose posters okay, and it could be a poster like this where they have the text boxes where you're going to write in the text for your information. I'm going to give you what sections to put. You're not going to have an abstract for example. This one has an abstract in it. But right here the way this one was put together they have like a, a shape background uh, for emphasis. And what you can do is you can just shorten that to make space for your table. And then all you do is paste it. So control V and there's your table. And then you just have to work on the formatting. The, the print is too small. It's got to be at least a font size of uh, 20. Uh, 
or so. Uh, and this is a smaller poster, so it's a 36 by 24, so typically you might be looking at it more closely. So uh, for the larger poster, the 46 by 24, you might go to a font size of 24 for the text. Of course, the title is a bigger font, just leave that as it's already there automatically for you. So what you can do here is just adjust the font size by highlighting the entire table and then you can go up to like 20 or so and then you can go ahead and even change your design if you like um, uh, whatever you want to do uh, with it now the other thing is to remember that you do need to put a caption on there and that means you're going to have to add a text box and you want to make sure that uh, for the text box that you're going to add that on that text box, you uh, you also have the appropriate font size. And if the background is dark, you make sure you change the font. Let me zoom in a little here. And right now my font is dark. So I'm gonna wanna change that font uh, to a lighter color, maybe a white color there. And it's uh, here, uh, if it's your first table, you're gonna put the caption table one. Uh, and And then you have to put a description there. All captions in these types of reports have some description on there. You just put a little description of what it is. This is germination rates uh, at different uh, time intervals, 24, 48, and so on. Uh, and then you also want information on how you calculated the test range. And that's what I kind of told you here on that document. Okay. There is some print in red. It's not what you're going to put on there. It's just telling you what goes in the caption. Uh, including any special calculations. I don't need to know how you calculate a standard deviation. Okay, I don't need to know that. Uh, we know how to do that. That's standard. What we don't know as a reader is how you did that special significance test that can only be found probably in Hodapix, uh lab manual, your lab manual for, for this course. So there we give a little indication there where we wrote the mean plus or minus one and a half standard deviation is how the, the test range is. So I kind of worded it a little, so if you need assistance in wording it, you can look there. But you've got to include something in there on what's in the table. You can't just say table one. And then when you talk about it in the body of your paper for the results, you say the results of the lab or so-and-so can be seen in table one. You refer the reader to table one. And then talk just a little bit. What's What do you see in there? What do you see as the researcher? Table one shows that, uh, for me, in my case, uh, nearly 100% of the disease germinated regardless of the treatment uh, already at 24 hours. And you're done in the results. Okay, You just said a little bit about it in the body of your of your poster and you refer them to the report. You can't just say refer to table one. Give them a little something. What are you thinking when you see it? Okay, that's the way it works. So um, that's how you do tables and you paste them in there. The other one uh, to do is, and you can do the same thing with your with your graph. So uh, remember, we made a graph last time, and you can fix the graph. And what I would do is adjust it to the size uh, the, of the spaces available to it. Uh, so you can go to your format, and if you like the dimensions on there, you can make sure you lock aspect ratio. And I know in some of my posters, I need it to be at least eight inches wide to fit where the columns were, and that makes everything bigger. And then I can adjust the font size here. Uh, so here I'm going to adjust the font size to, it's at 10 right now, so I'm going to adjust it to uh, 20, okay. or maybe 18 or so. And then I'm going to go here, and I want to change where that uh, the legend is. I like it on the right there. Okay, so uh, there that is. We already have the titles there. You can even go and change it. Maybe I want a darker background like this. Uh, oops, my... Uh, my fonts went back. Whenever you make changes, sometimes Excel is stubborn. It says, I liked it this way. And uh, so you go back and change the font size again. I want to change the, the legend to the right. There are my error bars. And now all I got to do is uh, copy this. And then I can go to my uh, report here. And I can find some space for it. And your uh, graph is going to need a caption too. It looks like my 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 colors changed a little bit. That's okay. Uh, you can go back and change your color scheme. I like that color instead. Uh, and here you're going to need a caption. If this is your first picture or graph, pictures and graphs are going to be called the same thing. They're going to be called figures. If this is the first one on there, then that would be figure one. Okay. 
uh, unless you have some pictures of, say, your experimental setup like I do in this other example. So I chose another poster design here. Uh, where is it? Uh, right here. And in this one, this is a larger poster here. You can see I already put a graph on there, so I can just paste it uh, there. Oh, and it even changed the colors for me automatically again. Maybe it, it's picking a color based on some color scheme there. And you see that eight inches width is fitting within the columns here. And then you would add a text box caption, but this time the text box was, would go below. But notice I have one picture here that's come first uh, in my report. So I might label this as figure one, figure two, figure three, and so on, you do them in order, and that way you can refer to them in the body of your text as you write about it. Again, you're not going to have an abstract. I'm going to change what you what goes in each section. I'm going to put together one of these posters with just guidelines on what to include in each one of these, and then you find spaces for your tables and your, um, um, your, uh, your figures, your graphs. Okay, so I hope this tutorial helps. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.